Welcome back to the morning show here on Iraj News. Running for president of Nigeria means building a brand that at least 51% of the country is willing to buy on election day. As the country gears up for another presidential election, branding has become a pervasive and vigorous component of politics. It should not be surprising that the presidential candidates and voters who will soon go to the polls pay more attention to Lagos instead of policies than ever before. Joining, joining us now to speak on the importance of political and national branding is brand expert Charles Otudo. Hey, Hi, for Charles. Us. Good morning. Welcome to the morning show. Glad to be here. Now, on this program previously, we've had about one or two guests mm -hmm. to talk about branding. Yeah. And they talked about personal branding, mm -hmm. corporate branding, mm -hmm. uh, national branding. Yeah. Now, this whole thing about branding, at what level does it start? The, for, for me, branding starts at, at, the, at the basics, and it starts with the individual. Um, my philosophy is that a brand is a storehouse of trust. That's the beginning of it. Now, you have individual brands that, f that create corporate brands. They make up the corporate brands. Who are the people that, cr that make up a national brand? They're in also individuals. So if you have successful individual brands, you have a successful corporate brand because they're cumulative. Then you have a successful national brand. The challenge we have is the, the frailty of individual brands right now. How? How do you mean? We have a lot of brands that are not well structured individually. Um, it starts with the self. Um, understanding your purpose. What is your real purpose for being here? And then understanding that you are here to add value, not about somebody else adding value to your personal brand. You are here on earth to add value, not to take away. Now, if you understand that as a person, you translate only, you, all you communi communicate will be positivism at every touch point. What we have are individuals are moving around. All we are interested in is what we can get, not what we can give. Yeah, that's my point. I mean, Socrates, you are sounding too philosophical. Mm. You know, almost sounding like Socrates saying, man know thyself. Man know thyself. But the average Nigerian <laughs> wants to get ahead. Yeah. He wants to make money. He wants to get position. He you have a problem with that? I do, because it starts with self. You're not here to make money. I stopped working for money many years ago. When you start ah, working Charles, for values... Ah, Charles, I didn't know you were so rich. It's not about wealth. <laughs> you can't drive more than one car at a time. Mm. When you understand the principles of self and self-mastery, everything else falls into place. Why am I on earth here? As a personal brand, I'm here to add value. So everything else I do is about value add. When you start adding value, wealth chases you. You don't chase wealth. Yes, you must work, but you work smart, not hard. Then let's go to politics. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, uh, this one should okay. take this, you know. Uh, uh, I was just listening to you, and I, I've just been trying to get the figures I know, and it set up as limits for uh, electioneering. Mm -hmm. So you say you don't need money to do this. No, I did say that. You need, you need money to run an election. Oh, great. Definitely, but yes. to sell yourself, you say you need to oh. know your purpose yes. and then sell yourself. But, yes. but going into these elections, mm -hmm. uh, already we are seeing posters, mm -hmm. we are seeing uh, billboards mm -hmm. everywhere. How much really do you need to sell yourself to the people? Uh, first of all, what are you even selling? Are, they, are you selling just your personal brand or are you selling the, the values you prefer? So, so going into the election, what should you be selling? You if you're, be if selling if, as, as uh, a candidate in yes. these elections, what are you supposed to be selling? You should sell what you're bringing to the table. What are you bringing to the table that will add value to the lives of the people? What are your policies? It's all about solving problems, not just selling self in terms of your, who you are as an identity, but you must sell, solve a problem. Most of the campaigns you see are not driven by any philosophy. None. They're all driven by logos, um, symbols. Are you saying they are necessary? They are necessary, but that's not what we should focus on. You identify, you, you can differentiate your brand, for one, but what should identify, what separates you or differentiates you should be what you are going to bring to the table. Most of the campaigns are lacking in ideas. They lack content. They're all focusing about winning, winning, winning. What, are you, what problem are you solving? We have... So many issues, lights, insecurity, I mean, housing, there's so much. What are you solving? What is your, your strategy that will meet the needs of the people? Nigerians want to hear what you are about to offer. Okay, let's go beyond the individual. Mm. If you take the political parties, yes. 79 of them mm. now on the list, mm. as brands, 
What's your take? Are they brands? They're commodities. How, They're how not you... brands. A brand is a storehouse of trust. How many, how many of us trust those, those parties? What separates them from well, the there next? There are new ones that have emerged. What separates them from, the, from each other? Nothing. They're all just names and slogans. What do they represent? Remember in the 60s and 70s, we had the, the Aulawas, we had the Azikiwis, we had the Sadauna. Those were brands that had philosophy, they had a strategy. You could, you could, they were tangibles you could touch. You could, you, could, you, could, you could feel their passion for meeting the needs. What are the, the, what's their strategy? None. It's all recycled, I want to use the word recycled brands. It's just recycling. You leave one party, you jump to the next one, you, you move with nothing because you, you're still part of the other party. I'm more interested in what are you bringing to the table that will meet the needs of Nigerians? What separates you from the other person that is competing and contesting with you? I don't see any. Well, for the benefit of voters, the electorate, how do you identify a brand? One, what is he or are they selling? Can you identify a value that is in synergy with your needs? The APC, for example, the promise is change. saying that mm -hmm. they, they are promising change, they are promising continuity, mm -hmm. and that, that change, that continuity is centered around President Buhari. So what has changed? Isn't that a message? What has changed? In the past four years, what has changed in the lives of the average Nigerian? It's a simple question. Let's leave the slogans. What has changed beyond trying to fight corruption? What has changed? Now, when I work on the brand in terms of strategy, I tell the client, you must be able to meet those promises or else you become a failed brand, you become a donut. Heavy on the outside, empty on the inside. Hollow effect. What has changed in the lives of Nigerians in the past five, five, four years? But the failure you see in the political sphere, do you see the same failure in corporate Nigeria? Oh, a lot of corporate brands have failed. The same issues happen because when you promise and you fail, that means that you have no structure to meet that promise. There's a big gap between your promise and your delivery. So the challenge we have with most brands is the gap between the promise and the delivery. Political brands also. How about the Nigerian brand as a whole? What has happened? Has Nigeria as a whole met the demands, the needs of Nigerians? I talked about this many years ago. We need to have what I call... We're the Mr. giant of Africa. We need to have what the... The call largest, the most populous country we need to in, have black, a, we, in the black, black world. We need to have a social contract with Nigerians. Nigeria has owes Nigerians what I call the social contract. You, for you to hold the Nigerian passport, you're entitled to A, B, C, D, and E. Nigeria must work towards meeting those, those yearnings. There's none. That's where we have the gap. We, we expect a lot from our country. We pay our tax. You are expected to, to meet certain levels of responsibility. Mm -hmm. What do you get in return? So you, when you want to create a brand that is successful, you must manage the gap between your promise and your delivery. That's why I said a brand is a storehouse of trust. For instance, Mr. Ruben Abati, you are renowned, renowned for something. You are known for delivering on content, intellectual capacity. The, when you call me, I know you are calling me, you will deliver beyond my expectations in, in, in terms of that, that capacity. What happens when you call me and I meet you again, and then suddenly I notice that something has, you've lost certain elements in terms of your ability to deliver those promises. That means that you have either stopped reading <laughs> or you have what I call um, temporary um, selective amnesia. Se amnesia. selective amnesia at that point, <laughs> mm -hmm. that, which is not in synergy with your brand long term. Then, then I now realize, oh, next time he calls me, go for the other meetings and keep him on the waiting list for last. That's what happens when the consumers start losing confidence in the delivery. That's what's happening with most of the political brands, the Nigerian brand itself, and then individual and corporate brands. But when brands do fail and, mm. and promises are broken mm. and then trust are broken as mm. well, uh, this can be renewed, mm. can they? Oh, they can. Uh, and talk, talking about that going into the elections, we yeah. have a two-horse race, whether mm -hmm. we like it or not, with so many other parties mm -hmm. vying for that position. We have a case of the PDP, who has mm -hmm. been there for 16 years, vowed to be there for 60 years. Mm -hmm. However, that failed mm -hmm. when they were ousted by uh, the APC government. They have ab apologized to Nigeria and saying mm -hmm. that they know that they, they, they failed at some point. Uh, they are seeking to come back uh, mm -hmm. with the Atiku Obi ticket. Uh, Nigerians, it seems to be 
we have been told the same promises over mm -hmm. and over again. A brand as the PDP, do you see them regaining trust? Because you say these are all recycled patterns. What's the difference between the PDP brand and the APC brand, beyond the broom and the umbrella? A brand is made up of the promises, like I said. Mm -hmm. Now, but there are individual, there are human elements in those brands. They've only shifted camps. They've, or you, you have the crisscrossing. Has the philosophy behind those brands, the, the two brands, changed? What is driving them? What is the agenda? What is top on the agenda of the PDP and then the APC as we speak right now? Can you identify? Can I identify? I can't identify any differentiating agenda. Nothing. It's all up. See, politics should not be about just winning. Politics should be you go in there, you make, you transform, you change the lives of the people, and then people can see and feel and experience a transformation in their standard of living, and then they can they will become ambas ambassadors of that experience. Four years down the line, let me use myself as a case study. What has changed in my life? What has changed? Well, your beard appears uh, whiter. whiter. <laughs> <laughs> what has changed? Yeah, that's, that's some change. Let me ask you, what has changed? What has changed? What has changed? So anyway. it's, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit, um, what's the word? It's, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't place my finger on anything that has changed beyond well, the fact on, of corruption. Earlier on, you referred to the, to the national brand, mm -hmm. to the country brand. Mm -hmm. And I told you where well, Nigeria is regarded as the most populous country, you Black know, as nation. a giant mm -hmm. of Africa and all of that. Uh, but there are some people who think that Nigeria is a failed brand. If that is true, mm. what can we do to rescue the Nigerian brand? One, in we, your view? I think we should define who we are as a people. We need to define, critically define, not just branding. We need to really define the Nigerian brand. Who, who is Nigeria as a brand? Now, what drives us? What are brand values? What are the values that should come tops in our scheme of things? Is it integrity? Is it um, um, faithfulness? Whatever. We need to define critically. I'm not well, talking we about have a constitution. We have Chapter a 2 spells out oh, yeah. constitutive principles and that. principles. But how many of us understand the constitution? We need to have what I call a brand driver. A driver that drives the, the basics that drives us as a people. If we define that, and then this, the people in government leave it out. You see, it's very easy for us to say we are Nigeria, but how Nigerian are we beyond the slogans? Our lifestyle, are we better off now than before? Are we more disciplined? Are we more organized? Now let's leave the Nigerians apart. Let's go towards, look at the Senate. Look at our political leaders. How do they conduct the affairs of state? How do you run your personal brand, you yourself, in your, in your personal capacity, and then when you're in public, and then when you're executing your, your role? How has that changed? Does it, does it relate, does it reflect the values we profess? So what do we do differently? Sorry, Ruben, sorry to jump yeah. in there. What do we do differently? What's our role as individuals, as you, me, Ruben, what do we all do? It starts with me. The brand starts That's with That's a familiar me. Uh, slogan, isn't it? It should start with me. When I transform my brand into the positive one, I will transform everything that's around me. It will be what I call the bandwagon effect. It takes time. If I'm, I'm on, a, on a journey and I am consistent, people around me, long term, get inf they will be influenced. Quickly, before yes. you go, and this is a political question. Mm. You are a brand strategist. Yes. If you were to get uh, some briefs, mm. say from the um, Buhari or Shimbajo ticket mm. and the Atiku Peter Obi ticket, right? Mm. To come and manage their brands ahead of the uh, 2019 elections. Which one will you pick? I'm a consultant. I work for everybody. No, you can't work for both sides. No, 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 no. no. I'm saying make a choice. No, I don't have to make no, a I've choice. No, I've given you two of us. <laughs> you, you choose one. <laughs> You're putting me on this spot. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, we're having a conversation. Let's we'll see. Um, they have, I will have to process that. How? There, will, there will be a process that will lead to my decision. Mm. I need to have those interfaces with each of the contact no, points. No, but contact. these candidates are out there in the public glare. Mm. We all know them already. Which one will you pick? Which mm. ticket will you pick? For consistency and character, Buhari as a brand. Um, 
But the question is, does consistency and character transform the economy? Those will be questions I'll ask. Capacity to deliver the promises beyond character and integrity. So you already made a choice. You're a Buhari man. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> You're contradicting yourself. No, 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 no. no. You, you asked a generalistic question, and I answered generally. <laughs> Based on consistency and character, yes. But I would advise we change our strategy for the economy and focus on delivering the goods. And then the people around that government must change. The change agents must work closely with the change himself to create the change. Thank you very much, Charles. Thank you for having for me. Coming to the morning show. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's time now for another short break on the morning show. When we return, we'll have the Iraj News analyst, Emmanuel Efeni, join us with a review of the top stories in today's newspapers. Please stay with us.